Hello and thank you so much for joining me for Saturday Night Crafting. My name is Sasha Reed. If you've not met me before, I run a YouTube channel and I do lots of fun tutorials and techniques for you each week. And I wanted to point out for my new subscribers as well as my old subscribers, then I've got a new video series coming up on Wednesdays, so you can join me every Wednesday for Quick Technique Wednesday where I'm going to share with you a fun and creative technique that should only take about five minutes in video length. So make sure you are subscribed and that you have that bell notification ticked so that you can come along and follow me on a Wednesday as well. We're gonna dive straight into to tonight's technique. It is a fun one. We are going to make our own little sort of turnabout stamp, um, make our own cool, awesome background papers. So getting started, I have got myself a piece of six by six cardstock and I am just marking the center point on each side. That then gives me four equal size boxes to work with him. Now you can do this with any size piece of cardstock. It doesn't have to be six by six, but it has to be an even number on each side. So it has to be squared. I'm going to use up these little small stamps. This technique is perfect for these little stamps that you've got. And if you haven't got a stamp set that has a whole ton of little ones like this one that I've got here, you can go through all your stamps and pull out all the little ones from all your different sets and just make use of them. It's a great way to use them up. Just have a double check though when you use them that they're all roughly the same depth because I know that some brands do different depths of photopolymer stamps and if you mix photopolymer with silicone then you might find that they're different depth as well and then they might not stamp evenly. So if you do have a nice set that's got a whole bunch of little ones in it, use that one set. It might You might find it will work a little easier. Now all I'm doing is placing my little stamps down, kind of figuring out where I want them to go. I wanted my butterflies a little bit spaced out. And on that top edge, on the right hand box, and along the right hand um, side, in that first top box, you could go over the edge, which then kind of gives it that sort of flowing look to it. So you can take your stamps and put them over the edge because that, that side's not gonna matter. That's always going to be over the edge on that side. But we are only filling that right hand box in. Make sure all your stamps, when they touch that pencil line, are all within that box. Do not go over those lines or you will struggle and have problems. Once all your stamps are on, you can go ahead and shut the lid on your stamp platform. I'm sorry if I didn't say this is a great technique for a stamp platform. If you haven't got the stamp platform, you could do it with a acrylic block and line it up all the same way and then you can just stamp it individually. I just find this much easier and then when I get to the second phase of this video where I'm going to step it up a little bit, you do need to have a stamp platform and you'll see why in a minute. So right now we're making our template. This is something that we're gonna keep and you can keep this with your stamp set forever. This is our sort of little template of how we're gonna lay out our stamps. I've made sure they're all a little bit spaced out, mostly because they have an edge to the stamp and then they'll stick to each other and not stamp very nicely. But if you space them out a little bit, it gives you a bit of wiggle room for our second half of this technique. So I'm going to create my full template. I'm just going to carry on stamping. I'm gonna ink up, stamp, turn my cardstock, um, what is it, 90 degrees? I don't know, I, don't quote me on that, I don't know what it is. You just turn it to the next square and then stamp it again. Now this is the template. We don't have to do anything more with that at the moment and we're not going to use that in our card making. Once that template is done and you're happy with how it looks, you can go ahead and grab your cardstock and start stamping away. Now I made eight of these panels because it was so much fun and I used a whole bunch of different materials. I used craft cardstock, I've used black cardstock, I used white cardstock and you can trim these down as well. So I will share with you towards the end of the video how you can kind of trim it down and make it work for whatever size card you've got. Now I wanted to do some embossed ones as well because I felt like this would look gorgeous in maybe silver or white so that's what I did here. I went ahead and used WOW embossing powder and their ink pad and I inked up my whole background doing exactly what I just shared with you. Sprinkled some of this fine, super fine silver over the back of it. And then I went ahead and heat set it off screen just so you can see. I did get a little oopsie there because when I rotated it around on my stamp platform, it kind of stuck to that sticky embossing ink and then dropped when I lifted the um, lid up. And then I got that little streak. So I took a paintbrush and wiped it, but you can see it just there on the left hand side, you can see a little bit of a streak, but it's fine. That's where we can put the sentiment. <laughs> now, a quick reminder before we move on to the second phase and how we can sort of switch it up. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe my videos. This is my full-time job, and every view that you give me, and every like, and every comment, and every subscribe, 
is what pays me my income and it's very exciting and I wouldn't be here without any of you guys but I do want to ask if you would like to join me on this crazy journey I would love to have you and I would love to see you each week I do read all your comments and I do my best to reply to them but sometimes it gets a bit overwhelming because you guys are amazing but I do read all your comments we're moving on to the second version and this is where we're going to add in color so that our stamped images are in color so what you want to do is get out some colors that you might want to work with. I'm using these Versifying Clara colors. And all I'm doing is working out where I want my colors to be. So I'm trying to space them out nice and evenly and kind of get a nice array of color. You can use as many colors as your heart desires. And we are going to stamp one color at a time. So I'm taking my template, I'm mapping out where I want my colors to go, what colors I want where. And you'll see in a second, I do change my mind. So I put down all my colors and then work out actually... I don't like the green I first put down and I don't have any of, the, any of the other stamps in that same green so I decided to change it. That one there on the right I'm just not happy with so we're going to change the color and that's the whole point of using the template is you can work out what colors you want and again if you messed up all the colors and you didn't like it you got four other squares to work with and play around with and figure out what colors you want. So I've gone ahead and changed that color and now I'm going to start with my butterfly colors. For no rhyme or reason I just needed to pick one and that's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to remove every stamp off my stamp platform apart from the ones that are in pink. So I'm going to take everything off and leave the pink ones left on my stamp platform and that way when I ink those ones up they will be pink. So now I can go ahead and start stamping. I've got my piece of cardstock there ready to go underneath my template. It is six by six inches exactly the same size as my template so I know it's all going to fit and look nice and we are doing the exact same thing we did before with the black ink. We are going to stamp it, turn it, stamp it, turn it until all four sections are done and then all we need to do is take off those stamps because we're done with that color, put our template back down onto the stamp platform. I like to remove my piece of cardstock first because that ink is a bit wet. With Versify and Claire inks, they are a pigment ink, so they stay wet for a bit longer, and I didn't want to smudge any of that stamping. So I took it off just to replace my stamps and work out my next section of my template. Now these don't have to be exactly lined up because we've got that little wiggle room um, where we put our stamps. You're just literally just going <laughs> to chuck them on top of the, where the stamp was. It doesn't have to be the same. If it's off ever so slightly, it's not going to matter because we've got that wiggle room. So I'm going ahead and putting down those stamps all in the next color. So the next color for me is purple. So I'm gonna stick all those stamps down where that purple one was. And it honestly took me about five minutes to do this panel. It didn't take long at all to do. And if you wanted to do multiple panels again, just have a whole bunch of six by six pieces of card done and cut and you can just do one color on all the panels then switch out your card panels and do your next color. This is honestly so quick and easy to do and you get such a gorgeous stunning result and again you could do a whole bunch more colors than what I've chosen to do. So we're going to repeat this process with each individual color on our template and just add on our stamps as we go for each of those colors. And it's so good because like I was saying earlier, you don't have to have it exactly lined up over the top. We are just using it purely as a template. Don't have to stress and worry about whether they're lined up exactly the way they were um, as we first did it. So that's why I was saying keep this template because you might want to use it again in future and you know exactly where to put those stamps to get this gorgeous little pattern. So here it is in multiple colors and the black and white version we originally created. Off screen I went ahead and I did a few more. So I did it on craft cardstock and on black cardstock and on these ones I used colored pencils and colored in the images. So if you don't want to do multiple colors or you don't have a stamp platform, you can still get a colored effect if you color in your images as long as you use stamps that are more like an outline stamp than a solid stamp. So those are two different variations for you. If you haven't got the stamp platform, you can still make it work and still get color on those um, pieces of card. Just treat it like a adult coloring book. And if you're not a fan of square cards or maybe you don't have envelopes for square cards and you just want a normal size card, you can go ahead and trim that panel down to fit whatever card base you've got and you can turn it into a card that will work for you and it just looks like a gorgeous piece of pattern paper. Now for this one I cut it down so I've got a nice little border all around the edge and I've stuck it down on my card base. But now I've got that really obvious point where the center point was of my fun little pattern and I feel like it kind of stands out a bit like an eyesore so that's where the sentiment's gonna go. <laughs> Quick and easy way to cover up anything we don't like on our card or any oopsies, that's where your sentiment will go. So I'm gonna pop that up with some foam and I thought, I wanted to make it 
a, have a little bit of color on it. So I decided to grab some of this metallic thread, which I got from AliExpress years ago, and it's still going strong. It came with a whole bunch of different colors. I'm gonna add some of that thread behind it, so it's got this little pop of purple. And then to, to kind of finish it off and complete a little bit more color on there, I'm gonna add in some purple sequins in sort of the same color as that thread. And as per usual in all my cards, I end up going for this sort of triangle effect. I go for three dots of glue on each opposite corner and then add all my sequins. Now my funny little thing is my homemade pick-me-up tool. It's lasted me for about three years now, that one piece of blue tack. It goes and goes and goes. It's blue tack on the end of a chopstick and it works a dream. So if you need a quick pick-me-up tool, that is the ideal solution. Now for my next card, I went ahead and used the same sentiment and die set. And I also used this fun kind of circle dies. I thought it cut out circles with this edging, but it actually just puts those dots into your card. It doesn't cut it out, it just adds dots. So you can put a cool piece of, let's say, glitter card stock behind it like this one here. I put in some purple glitter card right behind those dots so it kind of shines through colored with some colored pencils again on the front on that sentiment and then added some sequins and finished off that card. So I only completed two cards today but I have got all my panels ready to go for some more cards in the future but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you give it a go as well. It is so simple and easy to do. You won't be disappointed and you will have such good fun and you'll get use out of those tiny little stamps in your stash. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday for Quick Technique Wednesday. And um, yeah, have a fantastic weekend. Take care. Bye.